good morning, folks, from earthquakes to weather to news. There's a lot going on this morning, so let's get right to it. We're starting at the sun over at spaceweathernews.com. Finding the last 24 hours on our star were very quiet. Nothing stirring whatsoever, just the passage of the dark coronal holes. The newly departed opening is finally having its solar wind die down at Earth. Slow and steady at the start, we spent days in this stream, but it was a medium intensity stream only, and lingering low solstice geomagnetic risk teamed up for the KP max of 4. Of course, more solar wind is already on the way. Seems like there's no break between them these days. You can already see the next coronal hole coming onto the Earth-facing disk on the north. It's not nice to point. Anyway, we're coming to this Greenland ground motion. Now, yes, this article and video is from September, but we discuss how it might affect earthquakes nearby someday. The strongest deformations appear to be to the northwest, top left of this view, and that may have honestly played a role in triggering what ended up being the top quake of the last day. A 5.8 in one of the least likely places to see one in terms of rarity. This is like a 7-pointer in California. Anyway, we're jumping way out now and looking at a star with shadows cast around it on the surrounding material. We know that it's not just a planet doing the shading, something large has to be doing it. We know the shadow rotates every 16 years for a full completion and that its young planetary zone is comprised of more disk-like features than formed mature planets. Well, if the obliquity of the inner and outer pre-planetary disks is off, the tilt relative to one another, then from our view, the tipped side would be shaded all the time. If we looked from the other side, I bet the shading and brightness would be flipped. We're back at Earth and diving deep down inside a volcano. This is Stromboli in Italy, has erupted in gorgeous fashion a number of times already during our short tenure here on YouTube, and the processes that lead to eruptive phase are now more easy to understand as we peer inside. I showed less than a third of the amazing images in that article. Up next... Climate scientists from around the world coming together to stamp the large-scale oscillations like the NAO as responsible for some major shifts in the western Mediterranean climate, and the sun is a driver. Of all the topics touched on in our newest book, there is none as certain or as clear as the solar forcing on the NAO and what to expect because of it. Anyway, speaking of atmospheric shifts, let's run through the next few days here watching the rainfall really focusing its accumulation at the spot in Northern California we actually think has a chance to handle it. Not that there wouldn't be flooding or major winter effects, but putting all that rain in the Emerald Triangle isn't going to be as bad as, say, Los Angeles and San Diego. The situation is ongoing. Meanwhile, it's rough across the pond as well. A few days after preposterous cold records were downed in Finland, the snowstorms wreaking havoc across the continent still won't let up. Parts of Italy haven't been this cold in 20 years. It's less than three months to observing the frontier, and folks, the space is dwindling. There are tickets left, and there is still room at the venue hotel. If it's not too much of a bother, I'd love to shake your hand and then show you how to predict earthquakes. Learn more about the earthquake forecasting results and check the stats at quakewatch.net. Be sure to check out all your resources, actually. It's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.